mental illumination. And I want to turn to Psalm 119. A familiar verse to many, I'm sure. Psalm 119, verse 130. The psalmist is speaking to God and he says, The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So the entrance of God's word into our minds and into our hearts gives light. It's different from education. Education is not light. You can be educated and totally in the dark. How do I know? Because I was highly educated and totally in the dark until the light of the Word of God shone into my life. So remember, education is not light. Years ago, I was dealing with African students in East Africa whose one ambition was to get education. And I wrote a little tract for them once called, You are seeking education, but are you also finding wisdom? And I pointed out wisdom and education are not the same. And in this tract, I pointed out something which has shocked some people. Most of the trouble in the world is caused by educated fools. Um, Theodore Roosevelt, former president of the United States, once said this. He said, if a man is a thief, he'll steal a, rail a railroad car or carriage or compartment. But if you educate the same man, he'll steal the whole railroad. So, please bear in mind, education is a useful thing, but it is not light. In fact, as I say, some of the most educated minds are in the deepest darkness. It's only the entrance of God's Word that gives light. The next one is victory over sin and Satan. Psalm 119, verse 9 and verse 11. How can a young man cleanse his way? by taking heed according to your word. And then again, verse 11, Your word have I hidden or stored up in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Many, many of our young people today really question whether it's possible to lead a pure life. And most of their educators will tell them it isn't. They'll recommend what they call safe sex, which is never safe. But the Bible says, a young man who gives attention to his way according to the Word of God can lead a pure life. And I thank God when I worked amongst African young people, I saw those words fulfilled time and time again. They were made pure and they led clean lives because they give heed to the Word of God. And you remember that we looked in Matthew 4, when Jesus encountered Satan, he only met him with one weapon, it is written. And then again, and we're going very quickly now, in Ephesians 5, verses 25 through 27. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. Husbands, love your wives. Just let me tell you, husbands, that's not a suggestion, it's a command. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. How will Jesus provide himself with a, br with a br bride who is holy and without blemish through the washing of water by the Word of God? The Word of God sanctifies us, it cleanses us. John said of Jesus, this is he who came by water and by blood, not by water only, but by blood. By the blood of his sacrifice, he redeems us. But by the water of his word, he cleanses and sanctifies us. We need both. We're redeemed by the blood that we might be cleansed by the word. And finally, James says, and we won't turn there, but in his, first, in his epistle, chapter 1, verses 23 to 25, the Bible is a spiritual mirror. When you look into it, it doesn't show you your physical appearance. It shows you what you're really like inside. And James points out, when you look in a mirror and see there's something wrong, the sensible thing to do is to tend to it. If your hair is out of order, you brush it. If your face is dirty, you wash it. You act on what you see in the mirror. And James says, you need to do that when you look in the mirror of the Word of God. You need to see your spiritual self in it and act on whatever it shows you that you need to do.